Hi, this is Robert Strickland. I'm the author of GemCAD for Windows. Today I'm going to demonstrate uh, some ray tracing software that I'm working on for facet design. It's called GemRay. It'll be GemRay for Windows. This version is GemRay Test. So we're looking at the triple design. just wanted to show you the geometry before we start doing any ray tracing. So it's a cushion triangle design with cut corners. Okay, let's run the new Jimray test here, this icon here. And uh, when you run the program, you're presented with the screen. And we're going to click the open button here and open Tribble. And I'm going to make one little, well, no, I'll just press the go button. So there you can see it's calculated 60 ray traced images and it's playing them back as an animation. Let me do that again. Let's make a bigger picture. One of the controls here is the image size. I'm going to change that from 300 to 400. And then click the go button, the one with the green arrow. Okay, the animation player plays back the animation that Jim Ray calculates and uh, you can see there's a pause button here. If I click the pause button, the image, the, it stops and if I click it again, it starts again. So there's a start stop toggle there. There's a frame control that'll let you select a specific frame. You can either click the up and down arrows. Uh, zero is fully tilted one direction, that's tilted to the north, and frame 60 is tilted all the way to the south. And if I just type in 30, that should give us something that's face up. Okay, now we're looking exactly at perpendicular to the table of the stone. The next control here is the animation speed. You can just hold down the up arrow to speed it up. That's twice as fast, and the maximum is 120, which is kind of ridiculously fast. And you can put in one for one frame a second. Push enter to for it to read it. There we go. Click, click, click once a second. So let me change this back to 30, the default of 30 frames a second. Jim Ray models several different, use, uses several different lighting models. Uh, the first one is a random lighting model, which is very similar to the old Jim Ray's random lighting model, except it, it's uh, a little darker straight above the head. It has more of a pronounced head shadow. It has variegated regions that of light and dark that show up the scintillation of the stone and it also has some spotlights. So you might notice some bright flashes and also some surface reflections off of facets. That, those are from the spotlights. If you click this last button here, uh, this is the way you f get uh, numbers out of Jim Ray. It'll show you graphically the brightness versus tilt and uh, shows you the different lighting models ISO, cosine, SC2. I didn't explain the SC2. Let's go back and look at the lighting models again. So the SC2 lighting model is new for Jim Ray for Windows and it's uh, dim directly overhead, dim on the horizon and brightest at 45 degree elevation so lights, it has sort of a built-in sh head shadow. All of these light models do have a head shadow built in that you can control. I'll show you that later. The cosine lighting model is bright directly overhead and dim on the horizon and smoothly varying. The ISO model is uniform light coming from all directions. The DSP light model is used to indicate where there might be a potential for dispersion if the material has it. Quartz doesn't, so that's kind of irre irrelevant here. Let's go back to the random lighting model. You can see as the stone tilts, it, this region goes light. That's where the stone windows, where you can read through it. In the other lighting models, that is shown in black. I'll discuss that later. There's one other button here. If you push the pause button, you can see the little save as image 
icon comes up. And uh, let's say we want to save this to a, to a JPEG file. You can click on the button and then a save as. Windows save as standard dialog comes up and you can type in, let's do triple dot you can give it the JPEG extension, JPG, and then save it. And uh, that has shown up on my desktop here. Let me drag it over where you can see it. If I double click on that, it will display the image in uh, standard um, photo viewer, whatever your default viewer for uh, JPEG files is. And you could put that into another document or do whatever you want with the JPEG. So that's the way you get output from the program. Okay, that's about enough for my first lesson here. So stop this and uh, we'll get back to it soon.